So you know I've been playing this deck for a very long time and we haven't done a profile for 2024 yet and this is gonna be it. I've been testing extensively for an upcoming regional later this week and I was jokingly saying that yeah I'm gonna play Branded Despia, it's the deck I'm most comfortable with and as I was testing this deck and different decks I discovered that in this midterm lower power level format Branded Despia is actually really really good. So I wanted to share my take on the build in my opinion, and this is in all honesty, one of the most comprehensive deck profiles I've done. I'm gonna really explain to you a lot of the things here that you might not know about the deck, especially if you're picking it up, and also tell you what I'm not playing and why I'm not playing. I think this list is probably one of my best yet. I'm really, really happy about it. I feel really good about it, and I'm really excited to share it with you guys. So before we begin, besides liking the video and leaving a comment, and of course subscribing if you are new to the channel, which will really help because we're already halfway to 17K, if you have a Twitch account and if you're a Twitch enjoyer, go over to Twitch right now or just wait till the end of the video. Type in Galzo TCG, follow, and that's it. I'll probably be live as you're watching this today. So check me out over there. Let's go into the deck profile. Branded Despia, why I think this deck is actually really good in this format. I think in this specific format, the power level is a bit lower because a lot of people are playing either rogue or just different variations of the decks that are currently like meta, but there's definitely not a clear tier one deck. Um, maybe now with rollback and a little bit with bonfire, we're gonna see a resurgence of lab and maybe Centurion, but I think um, even though Lab is a hard matchup, Centurion is a very good matchup for, for this deck. So um, besides that, I also think that Fire King is a very good matchup for this deck as well. I've been testing extensively against Fire King specifically for that reason, um, just to understand the matchup. And I think that um, since Fire King mostly deals with removal, it doesn't really hurt Branded because Branded is not super weak to removal. So uh, more about that later and in future videos. Right now, I wanna tell you what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to look at the deck profile as a whole. I'm gonna explain everything that is not trivial. Some things are pretty obvious, but I'm gonna dive deeper into other things. It's gonna be a little bit longer. And also, I'm gonna show you what I'm not playing and why I'm not playing it. Let's start with the main deck. So let's get comfortable. I adjusted the lighting a little bit so you can see a bit better. Um, and the first card is of course, three Aluber, the Jester of Despia. Um, this card is your starter. Of course, your searcher. Uh, it's a great interruption in the graveyard as well. Um, and I'm gonna explain why we play these types of ratios with the starters um, when we get to Quem and discuss her. Alibur three is a pretty no-brainer. Um, it's uh, it's a really good top deck as well because it gets you to a one-card starter also. Um, so in uh, simplified game states, this card is also really good. Um, so we of course maximize on it. Um, kind of the same thing with Albaz here. Um, I think that Albaz is, as we got the support from Cyberstorm Axis, there's no way you don't play three Albaz um, because Albaz becomes a much bigger threat because of cards like Quem, because of cards like Sanctifier, because of cards like Titanic Lad. This card, um, I've been saying it in every deck profile, you need to get in the habit of using this card's effect more because it's removal that is really hard to dodge. Um, it doesn't destroy, it doesn't target, it doesn't banish, it doesn't do anything. It just sucks up the monster as fusion material. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the strategy with Titanic Lad because you can, a lot of the times, surprise your opponent, uh, but you have to play this deck like chess a lot of the times. You have to think forward. Um, so if you want to know how to do that better, besides practicing, join our live stream over on Twitch where we test a lot and um, you can learn from there. So the next card is Albion, the Shrouded Dragon. And this is definitely non-standard for 45 cards, which this deck is. Um, I've been playing three in 60 cards, but never have I played it in 45 or just less than 60. It's always been one. I've been a fan of this card and I wanna to explain to you a little bit why I think this adjustment is one of the best that I've made currently in testing. Uh, I've been feeling extremely, extremely good about it. So if you don't know, this card sets you up by um, sending as cost, branded spell or trap or fallen valves from the deck to the graveyard. Uh, then you place it in the bottom of the deck and shuffle and draw a card. So this one refreshes your hand, two, it already sets you up with graveyard. So if you have Cartesia in hand and you need your normal summon for something else, this sends uh, Albaz so you can trigger the Cartesia and summon it. Um, this sends you an opening if you're in the Fire King matchup and this is becoming much more relevant now. Um, this sets you with a branded opening so you can actually protect 
all of your monsters um, from like a skyburn or something, they just can't pop them, right? If you set it up correctly. This of course sends retribution, which gets you to a branded fusion, you can return it to the hand. This gets you to basically everything that you need. Um, but more importantly than that, because we play thrust and fusion duplication, which we'll get to later in the video, and I'll discuss it. This also sets you up with that, sets you up with a branded fusion in the graveyard to activate your fusion duplication and target. So I've been testing out three. This card is fantastic. You never brick on it because you can set up your graveyard and draw another card. This card is just a free plus and it's really good to open all the time. This is a pretty big adjustment that I've made um, and I'm really happy about it. Next we have the girls. We're playing two Cartesia and we're playing one Quem. So I'll explain why um, we play these ratios exactly. Uh, so let's start off with the Cartesia. Cartesia is not something that you want to normal summon. You mostly want to special summon, but it has other uses. You can summon Albion the Sanctifier with it. Uh, you of course summon it with fusion duplication. And sometimes you also don't want to summon it with fusion duplication, with fusion deployment, sorry. Uh, sometimes you summon Cartesia, but sometimes you summon Fallen of Albaz. Sometimes you want to use Fallen of Albaz as an interruption and as a board breaker, in which case it becomes a little bit better to see this card more often. Um, because it cycles itself from the graveyard to the hand every single turn, it has like insane synergy with Albaz itself because you always get a material in hand um, just as a discard for the Albaz effect. Um, so one is simply too little. You need a copy in the hand and a copy in the graveyard a lot of the time. Sometimes you want to summon it with Quam. Um, so speaking of Quam, Let's talk about why we only play one, because we're playing three Aluber, right? And this is another normal summon of the deck. So, of course, you can summon Quem with Branded Opening, which is great, because with three Opening and three Aluber, and we're going to get to that in a second, you cover your bases in terms of getting these two. You always, most of the time, want to get these two, but opening one of each is not good enough because you can't special summon it. So you have to, in order to not brick, you have to play only one of this. Um, and Aluber is a three because it's a starter. Quem is not a starter, it's mostly an extender. Uh, it could be a starter in some scenarios, but mostly you don't necessarily want to draw into it unless you have opening as well. This is why we play uh, one Quem and two Cartesia. I think this is like the very conservative 40 card um, limitation. Um, I am playing one ad libitum. I've decided to um, give this card another shot. I think this card is absolutely amazing. It really helps mainly with just dealing with removal because it can summon back the mirror jade too. If you can get the setup correct, um, which again, you can see some of my gameplay, gameplay on the channel or on Twitch, um, then you can just plus on your opponent trying to activate mass removal on you. Um, things like evenly specifically, it's really, really good uh, over there. Now, Adlib is also a good reason. Um, a good reason to play Adlib is because usually when you get to Grand Guignol during your combo, um, you need to send something to the graveyard. And most of the time, when you already have maybe a Titanic Lad or Quem in rotation, you have nothing to dump off of Grand Guignol because you already get to Albion using Lubalion. You just send it to the graveyard and you just have a free send with Grand Guignol. And this send is it. If you manage to pull through your combo, a lot of the times this could be just the best card to send and you might not have any other cards as well. So Adlib makes it into the build here and uh, Tragedy, we're playing one pretty trivial. I'm not really going to explain why we play one Tragedy. Um, Bistia lineup, I am playing only three. I'm playing um, one Lubelion, one Serenir and one Magnemite. Um, you could just play these two. I really like the addition of the Magnum. If you want to cut down to 44, which is the magic number, I might actually do that. Um, this card is just good because of, you know, tier and or cost or stuff like that. Um, just getting more bestials because we play more in the side and this card is great. This card also gets you to combo a lot of the time, gets you to Albion the Shrouded Dragon, gets you to either one of these, gets you to Albaz itself. Um, so this is the Bistia lineup I've been playing. Uh, before that, I've been playing a little bit more because I played High Spirits, um, but I feel like this currently is a good enough ratio um, that I've found. One more Courier. Uh, again, if you're not playing Allure of Darkness, there's no real reason to play that. And these are the monsters. Uh, three Aluber, three Albaz, three Albion, which is definitely the non-standard part of this deck. Um, two Cartesia, one Quem, Adlib, Tragedy, uh, Lubelion, Serenir, Magnemite, and Mercurier. Moving on to the spells. As long as this, as this card is a three, guys, 
um, you're going to be playing three. Uh, there's no way around it. This card is the best card in the deck, and um, this is why you play three. And this is another especially good card, branded opening. You play three of this as well. Again, as we mentioned before with Quem, uh, you want to get access to this. So you do definitely want to play it. And again, Cartesia in your combo means that you go full combo, quote unquote. This isn't necessarily a combo deck, but Cartesia increases the ceiling of this deck by a ton and you need fusion deployment to get there. Again, this is also a board breaker because Albaz is a board breaker on its own, right? So get used to that idea as well. Uh, one branded lost, one in red. Uh, I wanna talk about the one brand in high spirits that I'm playing. So this card is actually relatively unique technology in the way that I'm using it. Of course, if you don't know what it does, you can reveal a monster in your hand, then reveal a fusion monster um, from your extra deck with 2500 attack or defense with the same type as the monster from the hand, then you can send both of them to the graveyard and add a Fallen of Alba's monster from the deck. Now, this is of course good if you have this and for example, Bestial in hand, you can send um, Serenir to the graveyard and Titanica. Titanica already guarantees that you're gonna have Quam at the end phase, right? This is the mindset that you need to be in, play in the main phase, thinking about what happens during the end phase. This is really, really important to understanding how to play Branded Despia. Um, but this card, the reason I mainly play it, obviously it searches every card in the deck, right? We've already established that. It gets you to Quam, it gets you to Cartesia, it gets you to the missing piece, as long as you have a dragon. And we have a lot of them. You can do it with spellcasters as well in this deck because you have Grand Gagnon, uh, but it's ill-advised. We're playing more dragons, so this card is good. The reason why sometimes this card is especially good is that you will encounter some scenarios where you don't have anything to search off of a Luber and you don't have anything to send to the graveyard through Serenir or even Albion the Shrouded. Sometimes you just have everything. This card, what it does, it returns to the hand if a fusion monster was sent to the graveyard this turn, unless you activated this effect. So if you haven't activated it, just discard it, sent it to, with Serenir, with Shrouded, something like that. It puts itself back into the hand during the end phase. This, in conjunction with playing with Albaz correctly, in terms of surprising your opponent with an Albaz during the end phase or something like that, or during their turn, and guaranteeing that you're gonna have that additional card in hand. It might sound like a stupid reason to play a card, but I guarantee you, this is the mindset you need to be on in order to play this deck to its full potential. Um, so we are playing one, High Spirits. Um, this card I considered playing two of. Uh, if you don't know what it does, this is also a special summon negate. Uh, effect, any effect that special summons a monster it can negate by shuffling back an Albaz monster from the field or two Albaz monsters from the graveyard, fusion monsters, that it. Um, gra graveyard effect, um, not in the same turn you activate the first effect, but banish it, target one brand spell or trap, return it to the hand. Um, this card is really, really good. This card makes a lot of your plays a lot better, staying in the graveyard as long as possible so you can get that extra card in the hand if you need to activate the Albaz effect. Just remember that. Um, this card is absolutely incredible. Um, now for some generic cards. Uh, we're playing one Called by the Grave, one Gold Sark, which usually I don't like, but I have to say just for consistency, it makes sense. Uh, if you don't, sometimes one in a million years, you will draw this alongside Tragedy and Mercurier, and you're going to want to die, but this is the name of the game. And then lastly, for the quote-unquote engine, Foolish Burial, um, this card is really good. Now, for the non-engine part of this deck, Super Polymerization. Um, I want to talk about Super Poly specifically. We're playing basically like 10 non-engine, maybe a little bit more in this deck, which is pretty good for Brandon. Usually you don't have a lot of room for non-engine, but there is a lot of ways you can utilize that space. Um, Super Poly trivializes a lot of matchups, protects your field sometimes if you need to use this defensively, makes every monster in the game almost uh, an Albaz target because you can... Even if you, you know, if you're facing against a full negate board and they have like a Baron in this pattern and something, it's like a Manadium board, you set an Albaz, they can't do anything and you just fuse away with the strongest threat on their board. Um, it trivializes a lot of decks, of, of course. And sometimes this is also the only out to like monster floodgates, like Winda or uh, Hero Plasma or stuff like that. Um, and of course it wins the mirror. Um, so this is one of the non-engine choices the next one is forbidden droplet 
Um, this, in my opinion, is really, really good in this deck. Sending cards to the graveyard is often a plus. Um, so Droplet, I feel like, is especially important in this deck because this breaks boards really, really easily with this deck, right? You only need the one Albaz to resolve, so if you can manage to bait a lot of other interactions, and you have a lot of quick plays in this deck as well. You have, um, of course, you have Super Poly, but you also have Opening, and we have Cosmics in the side, so you can use them as well, or like just Branded Fusion, Chain Baron, Chain Droplet, I'm gonna negate your entire field, right? Um, I feel like this card is especially good in Branded. I've been taking sort of a Manadium approach in how I um, look at the board breakers of this deck, and I feel like you don't really need hand traps. Um, regardless of the format, it just doesn't work well with the play style that Branded has because your engine can already break a lot of boards on its own. Now for basically my favorite package of the, of the entire deck, um, three thrust, one talent, and one duplication. Um, an extremely strong package, uh, in my opinion. And yes, we are not playing the Deer Servant. I'm gonna talk about why we're not playing the Deer Servant in the other half of the video uh, later on. So thrust, basically what it means is that opening this with um, getting ashed, right? You get ashed, you get thrust. Um, thrust, if, it's, if you're going second, it's much easier to pick out something that you need. You need a duplication, you need the branded fusion, right? Whatever you need, you can grab to the hand, or of course, talents, which is just an incredible card on its own. But fusion duplication is basically the reason why we play that. And uh, I, I wasn't a believer at first. I was not a huge believer, but I am. I am now because I've been testing a lot and this is what you should do. You should come to your own conclusions. Don't just listen to me or anyone else for that matter. Test for yourself and see what works for you in the strategy. Um, fusion duplication, target one fusion or polymerization, uh, normal or quick play spell in either player's graveyard. Either player's graveyard, banish it, this effect becomes that effect when activated. So you get ashed, you set this with thrust because you don't need to add it um, because your opponent doesn't control a monster. Uh, you set it, you activate brown fusion in your opponent's turn. Obviously, it's not ideal. It doesn't necessarily, you know, Nadir doesn't necessarily do more than this, by the way. Nadir doesn't get you to a full-on branded fusion. Um, so this, for me, was the better package. Uh, it's been working a lot better. 45 cards in the main. Let's pack up this deck in a very triggering and not satisfying way and get to the extra deck. We're going to talk about the extra deck. We're going to talk about the side deck, too. You don't usually get a side deck out of me, but today you will. Um, and then we will talk about the cards I didn't decide to play and why I decided not to play them. Um, to Albion, self-explanatory. This card is the best send off of Mirror Jade, which is also a two of because this card is the best card in the deck. This card is by far the best card in the extra deck. Getting to this is just getting a ton of advantage. And I think that um, there's no way you play less than two. Sanctifier, even though we don't play Gimmick Puppet Nightmare, is an incredible control card. Um, it manipulates your opponent's graveyard. You can control what is in your opponent's graveyard. Summoning this versus Tealments, for example, is especially good. Uh, it's really, really good because they cannot target it. Also, it's a big body, but you can manipulate their graveyard. You can steal stuff from the graveyard so they don't get defused. Obviously, it has a lot of other uses. Block your opponent's zones, for example. Um, fuse with Albaz, which is what it's supposed to do. Um, very good, even if you don't play, um, even if you don't play uh, Gimmick Puppet Nightmare. One Lubelion, self-explanatory, Albion, uh, Titanic Clad, sorry, this is uh, mandatory in every list, I'm sorry to tell you, you have to play this card because this card is um, an incredible toolkit. So I promised to talk about Titanic Clad here, right? So what I usually do with Titanic Clad is that if I know that I'm not going to be able to break my opponent's board, or even if my Mirror Jade will get negated when I'm trying to go for breaking a board and I have an al activated Albus' effect, um, this card, you need to get in the habit of using this card as material, as a cost, sorry, for Mirror Jade, when you know you have a clear way to fuse with Albas in the end phase. So if, for example, you've exhausted all of your opponent's um, negates, right? Or especially, especially when you don't control a Mirror Jade and your opponent's SP Little Knight is going to return during the end phase. This is one of the best ways to get up the Little Knight. You start off by getting this to the graveyard as soon as possible, right? 
they will banish something you control with um, SP, which is not good against this deck anyway, right? But they will try to do that. Then during the end phase, they will return their SP, but then you summon Albaz from this. You manage to get a card in hand, and then you make that SP. First of all, you remove it from um, the circulation, but you also make a Mirror Jade. Uh, this card also summons Quam, of course. Um, very good target off of High Spirits. One Brin Brum, um, incredibly good. One Grand Gnoll, mandatory as well. Um, I started playing Masquerade again. Um, this card unbricks your hand a lot of the times and puts up a very, very good timer that really pressures your opponent into playing a lot weirder when this card is on the field. They will usually either have to go battle phase or prioritize removing this from the board. I think this card is absolutely great. Of course, it's a time card, which you're going to use that anyway. Um, but I've been really enjoying playing this card. Uh, and I'm also playing Quaritus because, again, I cannot be... Every time I try to take this out of my deck, I immediately regret it. So, it's not going anywhere. It's a really, really good card. One Chimera, one Dragus Topelia, one Garura, and one Mud Dragon because we are playing Super Poly. 15 cards in the extra. Let's go over to the side deck and explain a little bit. It's a it's a bit different from from person to person, but I'm gonna explain um, because I don't usually do side decks in my videos because it depends where you're from, who's playing in your locals, what tournament you're gonna attend. Is it a locals? Is it a YCS? Is it a regional? So yeah, this card is incredible. Um, if you don't know what this card does, and if you haven't seen it before, this card uh, on resolution chooses one Fall of Alba's Fusion Monster you control and negates all other face-up cards currently on the field until the end of the turn. Okay? So what does this mean? What does it mean? Um, it means that if you have a Fusion of uh, a Fusion Monster that manages Fall of Alba's, uh, then uh, you have an Omni Negate that is searchable that doesn't have any cost as well. So you would usually end on a setup something like a Mirror Jade Granginiol Lost and a set branded in red. And maybe this too, okay? So the Mirror Jade is not going to be negated. The Grand Gineal is. If you have a Quam on the board already, uh, it's not going to matter too much because that Quam is also going to be negated. Um, the Branded Lost is going to be negated. But you can negate as many cards your opponent controls as you want as long as you choose the right timing with this card. Um, this card, of course, negates the Lightning Storm, the Evenly Match, the whatever right? The branded fusion for all you want. Um, it negates, the, they summon two horror monsters, you negate both of them, right? So this card I've been having a lot of fun with. Um, I think it's a searchable negate. This card is excellent. Uh, and of course, as a bonus, this card returns itself to your hand if fusion monster was sent to the graveyard um, during the end phase, okay? Not in the same turn as you activate the first effect, but again, another card in hand which is what the, this deck does. I like to say main phase three. Three droll, personal selection against things I'm really scared of, Manadium, Dark World. Um, a lot of things lose to droll, right? Granted, sometimes uh, runic as well. Um, another runic hate is Bell. I think it's very good in this format. Fire King, Labyrinth, um, you name it, Branded. Manadium as well, sometimes, right? Cross Super something. Tier Limits. I think this card might be a little bit better than Ash because it hits harder than Ash. Ash can hit a Search or a Summon. This hits usually a really important piece of the combo. Um, so this is why I play Bell. Uh, this also protects you from Bestials and Called By. Uh, I'm playing three Druze Worm because I'm scared of Destiny Hero Plasma. No, I'm kidding. But this this is, first of all, a Bestial, which is a great interu interruption. You could switch this out for Droll and Lock, uh, for DD Crows, right? I think it's it's fine to consider that. I think it's just more synergistics, works well with the High Spirits, works well with Magnemut. Um, gets rid of cards while not being on the field. So again, this huge monster floodgates. Um, it's not very hard to get to it. So currently, Druid's Worm is my choice. Um, Cosmic deals with everything that this deck loses to. Things like anti-spell, um, things like even Gozen match sometimes, things like the runic field spell. 
Um, I've been really, really enjoying just having this card. Another option that you can do is take out one Druze and one Cosmic and put in two Pankratops. So Pankratops will trade really well with like an anti-spell, which this deck usually dies to, right? And also gives you a body on the board, like getting rid of an Appalooza, um, and then just popping another card is really, really major for this deck because you need to be able to activate monster effects, Duster, and Herald of the Abyss because Pearly is still a thing. Uh, and we play Thrust, so these are amazing. This is the side deck. Uh, now we're going to talk for a few minutes about what I didn't decide to play and why. Because all of you in the comments are going to say, why don't you play this? Why don't you play this? Well, this is the answer for that if you're still here. So that's great. Branded in white, um, not enough dragons in the deck, in my opinion. Um, not necessarily enough to justify it. You do have Shrouded Dragon, but the Shrouded Dragon you don't want to um, fuse away with, right? You want to shuffle it back into the deck and draw a card and get the plus in the graveyard from that. Um, so Branded in white specifically, I didn't really find it just necessary to play. Um, Dragoon, every, I tested a lot with Dragoon in this specific format. I felt so bad going into it. It never felt good. Um, it never felt worth it. It always felt like I'm just going to get Typhon. Then you would, of course, get Typhon and just lose on this. Um, it's it's rough. The card is very good. But unfortunately, it might be past its prime. So, I'm um, sorry. Um, Kit, again, never really. Like, I've tested with it a lot. I'm telling you a lot. Um, like, either your... <laughs> Aluber resolves or not, or your brand fusion resolves, this won't help you. This really, really won't help you. Um, it's not a good extender. Um, and if your combo didn't go through, you will be stuck with this in the hand. Uh, since we also don't play um, Sprint, which we don't, I'll talk about that in a second, um, then there's no use for this card. Um, the Edge of Chain package, Patchwork, Poly. I found to actually be a little bit too bricky. I want to see other cards in hand that actually start my combo. Um, Polly on like an untargetable Chimera, it doesn't matter. If you resolve Chimera in this deck, you usually win. I'm going to say what Nesh has said a lot of the times, and I really like that saying. This deck either loses fast or wins fast, and this this card won't really help you. Even, even going second to break boards, you rather have your board breakers and your engine, in my opinion. Um, two, you know, targets... Uh, I, I've been an advocate for Gaming Pop and Nightmare because everybody's going to play unfair cards and lock you out of the game and sack and, and everything is disgusting. Um, but I felt like besides being an auto win, you will still lose to the same things your combo will lose to, right? So going into this line and committing to summoning Gaming Pop and Nightmare and then losing through that, right? Getting hit with a crow, a call by the grave, a bell, a bestial, something you you can search, of course, negations through through the combo for it, but not always, not super consistently. And if it doesn't go through, you are left in a very bad scenario. So considering the games where I did go through that line and got stopped, and the, the board I had to to use in order to win, you usually get extremely punished for that and if you commit to uh, a line that plays around stuff right because this line doesn't play around anything this is ball to the wall right this is i'm gonna resolve this and win or lose um so this is why i currently decided not to play it we'll see up until the original uh jinzo is not a good you know matchup for uh for labyrinth um starving venom everything like all the other targets answer this as well um this does deal with unaffected monsters but um just no room sprint my beloved i really really like this card but unfortunately there's no room uh if you would take out something from my list take out the masquerade put it in the side deck instead of like one cosmic for example and put this into your deck um this card is great but unfortunately can't fit it um same thing with this two situational unfortunate i really like this card but can't play it um dragoon we've already discussed and then lastly, uh, Borlode Furious Dragon, which is also a really good card. But again, not enough dragons in circulation. I think a build with more bestials and like branded in white, for example, really benefits from this because this is an incredible card. Um, the two things I don't have here that I want to discuss is Luluwa Lilith and um, the Nadir Servant Package. I've been feeling like um, going with, you could go with the Thrust and Nadir. 
Um, but I much rather have like a board breaker or something that is more generic because if your combo goes through and you have Nadir Servant, first of all, Maximus is kind of scary. I don't enjoy using that card a lot. I feel like I can always get punished going first blind into my opponent's extra deck. Um, and usually it does recover from Brand Fusion, but I rather just see Thrust or just Interruption, Super Poly, Droplet, stuff like that. Um, same thing with Lulu. I think Lulu creates a weird scenario where you saw, you, you would actually be prone to um, making illegal plays. It might sound dumb in a sense where like, oh, just don't make illegal plays, just be a better player and more concentrated, but it's really hard, okay? You are in a mindset where everything is legal and everything is okay, and you will activate Brand of Fusion, go through your combo, during the end phase, you get hit with a Bestial, you instinctively chain on resolution Granginio, and you summon Lulu, you can't, right? Now with deployment, now with opening, it's really hard to summon, okay? It's really hard to get the out consistently, it's just not good enough. So if you if you play Nadir, you do play it because it's a really good target for Nadir, but if you don't play it, then you just don't play, don't play it at all. This is gonna be my spiel for today. Um, a little bit over 30 minutes. Um, it, people on Twitter have been clamoring for more long-term videos or like lengthy videos um, that really dive into an archetype or a deck. So this is the one. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments below. And if you have some disagreements, suggestions, questions, I answer. And I look at everything and I see everything. Put it down in the comment below. Of course, head over to Twitch. Come on, follow me there. I'm going to be live. Once you finish this video, I'm already live on Twitch. So go say hello and follow. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day. Peace. Love you.